has ever been filmed like this before or since. The Patterson-Gimlin film is an icon to many Americans who believe in the existence of Bigfoot and to those who claim to have seen one. And the massive bicep in the arm is, you know, wide like that. It has defied explanation since 1967. And as it moved, you could see the muscles ripping in the thighs and, and, the, and the arms. Even underneath that hair, you could see the difference in the, in the, you know, in the movement. Is it history's most clever hoax? This is a singularity. Therefore, it becomes super important. Or is it real? When that creature disappeared, it disappeared up that dr uh, drainage there. Only one man alive knows for sure, Bob Gimlin, for he was there. The last time Bob Gimlin was at this uh, film site was October 20th, 1967. He tells his story for the very first time on television tonight. And what made you decide to do this particular interview? I feel in my heart that you're sincere about everything that you're talking to me about and that you're telling me about. I know you're not lying. Are these 952 frames of 16 millimeter film footage the best evidence that there are huge man-like apes living in North America? You usually don't see these type of movement amplitudes in walking. More importantly, does this film have more to tell? The legs walleye in and then kick outwards, walleye in and kick outwards. The key to the Patterson-Gimlin film is the walk. I would defy anyone to duplicate it exactly. So the knees are going in and out, in and out. Very strange. If this is a guy in some ape-like suit, he clearly is walking funny. My parents were honest people, and I was raised to be honest. Here you have a a large muscle here, which is called the bicep, so more so the hamstring muscle group. Cryptozoologist by profession, and driven by her own mysterious encounter, Autumn Williams travels the world. Thousands of people can't have seen something that doesn't exist. All we need is proof. Sometimes at dawn, or the edge of dusk, there's a fleeting glimpse of an impossible sight. Do you have it? I get it. I see it. Play golf! What's the range? The sightings are real. The technology cutting edge. Are you ready for mysterious encounters? The nervous time zone. I, I, I really regretted that I was there and saw it because of the ridicule and because of my wife being upset at me and practically thinking about divorcing me because of the thing, you know, and, uh, and the people saying they faked this and faked that and, you know, and uh, it, it just, it bothers a person. Bluff Creek, California is as rugged today as in 1967. It is here the Encounters team and I have come to investigate firsthand the famous Patterson-Gimlin film site and to meet a man who rode his horse into these mountains, forever changing his life and countless others, including mine. Bob Gimlin was part of a two-man team that obtained one of the most controversial films in history on October 20th, 1967. Is Bigfoot a living, breathing species or simply a legend? You be the judge. When I saw this thing, uh, it's almost unexplainable how I felt. I thought, you know, here I am. I've been here, but I'm tired, but this, this thing is real. The Patterson-Gimlin film subject displays an interesting feature here, indicating that it's walking on very flat, flexible feet. The 16-millimeter film footage was not the only evidence of Gimlin and Patterson's encounter. A set of clear, deep footprints were cast and offered as evidence to corroborate the film subject's reality. The footprints exhibit ridge, a very unhuman characteristic. I got up on a stump approximately 36 inches high and jumped off with a cowboy boot on into the soil to, uh, to illustrate how deep my boot would go in. Gimlin's boot barely dented the soil beside deep tracks made by a creature that supposedly doesn't exist. Replicating the prints and the circumstances surrounding them may give us a better picture of what really happened. 
Animation expert Ruben Steindorf from Vision Realm will be able to recreate a perfect replica of the creature's foot in 3D animation. And luckily from the footage, they were able to get these casts in the same location. And so when I actually work on the feet, I'll be able to use these casts as a good point of reference. When he's going through the leg swing, there is some outward rotation here. I really don't think that back then they had the technology to pull something like this off. Huge human-like footprints are found frequently in this area. The Encounters team investigated one such track find. You know, put the chills down my spine, so I knew that, that it was Bigfoot again that was, this time left some, you know, evidence of track. I could take you to the way the tracks are. And you found the tracks? Yes. Yeah. Whereabouts are they? Uh, what? They're down there on uh, south, uh, south end of Hoopa there, uh, and Carpenter's uh, fishing hole. Something's hollering down by the river bar. A huge bear track back over there. You can see where he stepped. This oh, was a few ones. days ago, and it was clearer before? Yeah, it was, okay. yeah, yeah, it was clear. It was happening on a Tuesday, and we're, we're talking Saturday right now. You got one? Uh, and just a big toe, I say it was that long. That was just a big toe. The detailed tracks we had hoped to find weren't there. But sometimes evidence presents itself when you least expect it. Did you hear that? I sure did. That sounded just like that. I heard that. Or, I heard it too. earlier. Yeah, you did I, hear that? Oh, yeah, and I zoned it out. No, that was something. That's the second time I've heard that since we've been here. It wasn't that far away. While strange screams echoing through a river canyon are intriguing, their source is not easily identifiable. But what Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin filmed that day in 1967 is still considered the best Bigfoot images to date. But was it real? One thing that amazes me is that I'm seeing what appears to be an injury or hernia on the right thigh. And you can see it bumping out here. I just think this footage is so understudied. I mean, nobody has noticed that lump in over 37 years. I mean, it's been a long time, and I think that serious scientific analysis is finally warranted on this film. We came around that tree and this thing was standing right alongside the creek. It automatically started walking away as quick as I saw it. I wasn't a confirmed believer that these things really existed. Bob Gimlin tells his amazing story for the first time on TV when Mysterious Encounters returns. Because I thought, well, there's a lot of people out there looking for Bigfoot and somebody's going to do the same thing we did. And, you know, and it's been 35 years and they haven't. These kind blue eyes hold a mystery. Bob is the only person still living who was there that day, seeing the creature not on a flickering film screen, but in living, breathing color with his own eyes. I imagine it to be something like an astronaut marveling at how bright the moon is tonight and remembering when he stood on its surface. Ha! Roger had gotten a phone call. They'd put a water tank in up in the mountains where they were planning on building logging roads. And when they came back on uh, Tuesday morning after Labor Day weekend, there was three different sizes of apparently big footprints is what they thought they were. And the time we left up there, it was the last part of September, and we ended in the Bluff Creek area. That's what we rode out of every day, then came back in the evenings. Hey, let's set up to Bluff Creek. The weather was great in October, like uh, this is around here right now. You know, maple leaves and everything was turning as normal in an October, uh, you know, frosty short nights. So Roger said, let's ride back up in some of them areas that we had covered before. I found prints up there last week. Good, yeah. We rode up that way, uh, up that creek bed away from our camp, which was probably a couple of miles. As we came around a downfall tree with a root system and the dirt, like a crow's nest, logs jammed together. As we came around that, then, uh, of course, the horses just blew up. Then this thing was standing on the opposite side of the creek that we were on. It was massive. 
I would imagine it, it was thinking about crossing the creek. When I 